Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a look at a very simple but still interesting question with a surprisingly complex, albeit hypothetical answer. How would Alberto's child from Einzelgon look like? What could it do? And what would its strengths and weaknesses be? At least in my imagination. But before we're going to do so, let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel as well as all users of the YouTube thanks function who made one-time donations. And with that said, let's dive into the question. Now first and foremost, we will take a look at what if the kid is a girl and what if it is a boy. Because I have prepared two different answers depending on whom's character build is more dominant. And we will start with the first scenario. Einzelgon has not only grown a pair, but also a nice Spear. As far as Albedo might be concerned, in any way it is truly strong and powerful enough to pierce her armor where it matters. And therefore Eins gets to experience the joy of fatherhood after experiencing the joy of a pregnancy affected Albedo. And the first kid, a girl, well, let's make them twins just to keep things balanced, is an angel of death. Basically a beautiful undead with the most malevolent and life-eating powers, destruction given form, a being of pure shadow, a puppeteer tying everything into a web of strings and intrigues in order to being able to feed on them and on their life itself. And she takes more after her father in terms of abilities and powers, with the bodily appearance and some strength of her mother, and while Eins Ulgorn's daughter is to put it mildly, a bit over enjoying the more cruel aspects of the tomb. Her twin brother is far more humane than his brutish and deadly appearance would let on. So let's get over her character sheet in order to explain her abilities. First and foremost, if Einzulgon is the Sorcerer King and the leader of the Supreme Beings, Einzulgon's daughter should also be a Princess of Nazarick and a Princess of the Sorcerer Kingdom. And since she has her mother's wings, Eins named her Lilith. After some sort of Mesopotamian character that was also associated with birds and flight, as far as Eins will go and could recall, Tabula Smaragdina's explanation, Albedo's creator. As an angel of death and daughter of Eins and Albedo, she currently resides at the Two Towers on the Cuts Plain, a place Eins will go and build together with the Great Tomb's inhabitants as a basically non-connected extension and in the image of Nazarick. The two towers are great gothic looking buildings, evoking the image of a very broad and massive yet elegant bell tower. And yes indeed, on the very top of each sits an accursed bell, a dot with 42 vertically and 56 horizontally sitting arcane runes. Each bell sounds demobilization of the personal legions of each of the twins. And each tower is filled with nine floors and located behind four separate walls encompassing an area of 49 acres where the deaf coaches ride, bringing supplies and materials from and to the two towers. Eins himself said that they each have 12 monsters inside of them who act as guardians that, combined, would also rival the strength and the power of the Floor Guardians themselves. Each will lead one of the 24 legions stationed at the Cuts Plain, who fight a continuous war, or rather exercise, against the natural spawning undead of the plain. And with that said, let's get to the character build of Lilith. She is an angel of death, and her abilities are all centered around tapping into the life force of others in order to strengthen herself and her weapons. While Imp is just her base level, the first really interesting racial level of hers is Life Eater. It contains various powers to absorb and manipulate life energy. Like her father, she is also able to use her own version of negative energy touch, called Life Eater Touch. And rather than afflicting all kinds of stat penalties, Lilith is able to not only heal herself by it, but also to fuel herself and her abilities with the energy absorbed, something extremely useful to her. 
next in line, we have the thing that needs fueling, her five levels, an angel of despair, the equivalent to Eins will go on the eclipse class. Here Lilith can use her own MP, the MP of others, or even her own health, or the health, preferably the health of others, to form a fuel sites that are considered magical weapons and scale with the magical attack stats of Lilith, which is already considerable and can also be boosted, though it is not as high as that of Eins. And the main reason why these weapons are so deadly is because if HP is added to the mix, they not only gain strength, but the scythe can also inflict physical damage for a certain time. Thus Lilith has the means to inflict high physical and high magical attacks, in addition to bolster her own stats. For example, she could overmax her mana bar, just like Ein Sulgon, if she wants to save the life force of others for later, or boost her mediocre agility to levels beyond that of Shelty instead. Now aside from all of that, Lilith has caster classes that also allow her to use more conventional spells like True Dark. And she has five hours of despair, just like her father, though in contrast to Eins, Lilith likes to have the first active if she can. Her job levels are among others Abyss Bringer, and yes, this is a Dark Soul reference, which contains all different Dark type themed attacks, as well as some insta death augmentations that Lilith can cast regularly upon her weapons, while Death Size contains all manners of skills and abilities to enhance her effectiveness with her scythe. And yes, this is a Soul Eater reference. As far as stats go, her HP should be a bit higher than that of Eins and a bit lower than that of Albedo. Since Lilith is also still her own being, I also found it very strange if she would just be a middle thing between Eins and Albedo all the time. So I really, really lowered her physical attack, since due to her wanting since her earliest childhood days to fight like her father, she created her magical attack weapons instead of learning physical combat, but still using these metaphysical weapons required physical training, which much to her mother's delight led her to develop a mix between Einzelgon's magical powers and the melee attacks of her mother. Her physical defense isn't as good as Albedo's or even that of Ein's either, though in combination with a higher HP, she still can tank some damage, even without relying on her life eater abilities. Her agility is mediocre if left unfueled, but once magic is added to this attribute, it scales the fastest. Next we have Lilith's unquestionable strength, her high magic attack and even higher magical defense. She combines the best assets of her parents within these two stats, and they form the base of Lilith's combat abilities. Her resistance in turn is rather mediocre, since she also relies on her MP to raise it if it is required, or to heal any negative effects that was inflicted upon her by others. And lastly, her special abilities and powers are maxed out. If she touches a beautiful meadow, it would wither and die in an instant. Like the evil sealed tree, her father thought Lilith can absorb the life force of half a forest if the situation would require it. Lastly, a few personal anecdotes of hers. Lilith likes to absorb the life force of her friends in order to understand them better, but never to any dangerous levels. She is a gifted chess player and battle tactician, something she learned from Demiurge and Renar, and she dreams of conquering the last continent not yet under the rule of the great tomb of Nazarick, together with her twin brother, in order to turn him more evil. Personality-wise, she tended to be babysitted by the Pleiades, Solution, Naberal, Lupus Regina and Entoma when her parents were gone, and they might have left their impression on Lilith as well. So basically, this is my take on the abilities, skills and stat of Einzulgon's hypothetical daughter, if he ever decides to have one. And now it's your turn. Do you agree with my little character build here, or do you think she should be different? Let me know down in the comment section. And next time we will take a look at how I imagine her brother would be, what skills he would have, 
and how he would define and even contrast himself with Lilith. And with that said, let's dive into the twin brother of Lilith. And unlike her, who looks way more like her mother than her father, but has taken a liking to her father's more magical fighting style, but ended up with negative 500 in karma, and therefore with a very evil outlook on the world, Ein Sulgon's son looks way more like his father, has had a keen interest in fighting like his mother, and acquired a karma value, a sense of justice as it is called here, of positive 500. Which brings us to his childhood, which was very much like that of his twin sister, but while Lilith always found the tale of the hero touch me, saving Ein's old gone at his weakest boring and a bit embarrassing to be honest, and always wanted to hear more about Ulbert Elaine Oddle, specifically his plan to find a world class item to create a demon army with endless numbers, way way more interesting to Hephaestus, named after the Greek god of volcanoes, fire and smithing, for his burning obsidian-like skeleton, the tale of someone saving his father and thereby his sister and himself was fascinating, especially since Einzelgon was later voted to be the leader of all supreme beings, including Tachmi. So Tachmi became his idol, and just like his sister Lilith, Hephaestus loved to walk among the mortals of the Sorcerer Kingdom, not to get praised or adoration, and not to be surrounded by so much life that one could potentially consume and devour, or sacrificed for some sort of grand catastrophic spell like Lilith always fantasized about. But Einzogon's son enjoyed the peace, the wealth and the tranquility his father had created. To him, it was something divine, and he wanted to protect it with any and all means. And to get to a more personal side of him, before we take a closer look at his stats, Hephaestus likes reading heroic tales, he loves painting with charcoal, and dreams about liberating the last remaining continent from the yoke of unjust, cruel tyrant kings, together with his sister, because he hopes that Lilith will eventually come to see these creatures of the new world, just like his father intended to, as beings deserving of love, harmony and the pursuit of happiness. Next in line we have the topic of his residency, and he shares the location at the Cuts Plain, but lives in his own separate tower. I've been over it in great detail in Lilith's video, so I'm going to skip further explanations and go straight to his level and classes. While his skeleton warrior levels aren't something special and his base class is very unimpressive, ever since he has one single level acquired all those centuries ago and was born, Hephaestus was able to bathe himself in fire, which was very uncommon, especially for an undead, supposedly weak to fire, but in fact he has a 100% resistance to fire-based damage and his fiery talent only hurts others if he actively commands it so. Something Albedo was especially thankful for. His obsidian bones were more bathed in an unholy aura rather than actually burning, his fingers and toes, later his hands and feet. And then finally his entire body could eventually be transformed into incredibly sharp blades that outclassed a normal scalpel with ease. But the final touch upon his character build came to Hephaestus when he finally learned to control his secret fire and became a proper infernal, which is the equivalent to the Eclipse class of Einzulgon, as in it contains a skill that makes Hephaestus, in spite of his glass bones, very good on the defense, much to Albedo's delight. The ability to overmax his already maxed out agility, and his fire already gave him an easy time to fuel his speed, and ever since his earliest childhood, he used it to propel himself forward whenever someone was in danger, so that he could rush to their aid, therefore turbo-leveling his speed, and hitting him while he uses his burning desire's ability is nearly impossible, as Hephaestus is literally the embodiment of the teleports behind you meme, for his fast movements leave the impression that he had already disappeared 
for only the pleasant smell of burning charcoal and his afterimage to remain. Since Hephaestus also doesn't suffer from the same emotional inertness as his father, he is much more lively and able to ignite a flame in the hearts of others, as well as his own. That's why he acquired Ten Levels and Emberbringer, a class that supports himself as well as his followers with various buffs and blessings. His legions are also known for being granted burning auras or flaming swords on a frequent basis or fiery spirits latching out against any attacks of their enemies. And due to Hephaestus' speed and his racial class of Bladebone, the son of Ein's Ulgon also acquired the class of Obsidian Scythe after training intensely with Cocytus, something Shizu Delta and Yuri Alpha celebrate to this day, since Hephaestus' favorite mates were witness when he first acquired it. Sebastian is also proud of him learning to use his Ember Aura like he would use his key, like his creator Touch Me had intended. And with that said, let's move on to his stats. The HP of Hephaestus is, due to his strong life force and jubilant nature, very high compared to that of Ainz, but still somewhat lags behind that of Albedo. Due to the fact that his fire aura is a talent as well as his blessing, he only uses his MP to fuel the odd support magic and buff spell here and there. But his main strength is in his attack power and in his agility, caring very little for being larger than even Ainz Ulgon. Due to Albedo's more monkey-like features, Hephaestus finds it incredibly easy to move around and places incredibly sharp obsidian-like bones into the enemy's weak spot. And he fights somewhat cat-like, something his father is very proud of teaching him. But in turn his physical and magical defense are quite weak, though this is more than compensated by his speed. And it actually has risen quite a bit due to the combined training Sebastian and Albedo has given him, while he owes much to his offensive stats to the training with Uncle Cocutus, who still enjoys it when Ein Son rides his back, like he did when he was little. Now his magic attack is unsurprisingly primarily used for buff spells and therefore quite weak, but in turn his resistance and especially his special abilities are quite high and Albedo prides herself on enabling his son to defend himself so well in this regard. And both Hephaestus' and Lilith's special abilities are also the result of intensive training with their older brother, Pandora's actor. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching. And I also heard you when you demanded that I should take a look at how the hypothetical children of Ein Sulgon and a certain undead floor guardian would look like. And with that said, let me also give my special thanks. Dash dash dash. Bad guy ye. Bad burrito 316. Be there. Ben C. Brandon D. Chrissy. Crowley 0221. Sia. Crystal Prime. Dead Slime. Death is Mercy. Deathless Dragonlord, Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devon Downen, Ding Dong, Duck Dragon, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Theralchivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Legendarius, Kyle R. Lelouch Ribetania with a mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R., Michael Y. Nope! Oh, hell no! Normal Toad, O'Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus Eleven, Cune Kerkos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Schwein Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, 
Star is. Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc War Boss, Rock at Smasher, T. E. Wang, Vash Orkai, Vegito27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm and Zonagon, thanks guys. Anyway, have a nice day and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.